The next section is called Babu Dikri, the chapter on Dikri. This is really an incredibly beneficial section for people, all of us. قَالَ تَعَالَى فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ قَالَ سَعِيدِ إِبْنُ المسيب مَعَنَاهُ أَذْكُرُونِي بِالطَّاعَةِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ بِالثَّوَابِ وَقِيلَ أَذْكُرُونِي بِالدُّعَاءِ وَالتَّسْبِيحِ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ وقد أكثر المفسرون لا سيما المتصوفة في تفسير هذا الموضع بألفاظ لها معان مخصوصة ولا دليل على التخصيص وبالجملة هذه الآية بيان لشرف الذكر وبيانها قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه عن ربه أنا عند ظن عبدي به وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منه والذكر ثلاثة أنواع ذكر بالقلب وباللسان وبهما معا واعلم أن الذكر أفضل العمار على الجملة وإن ورد في بعض الأحاديث تفضير غيره من العمار كالصراة وغيرها فإن ذلك لما فيها من من معنى الذكر والحضور مع الله تعالى والدليل على فضيلة الذكر ثلاثة أوجه. So he says, Allah says in the Quran, remember me and I'll remember you. And that's called a conditional sentence, jumla sharqiya. If you do this, I'll do that. So remember me, I'll remember you. Uh, Sa'id ibn al Musayyib, who is one of the great tabi'een, and it, the, it's preferred that it's al Musayyib. Sometimes he's, he's called al Musayyib, but the, the preferred one is Musayyib. And, and he said it meant, remember me in obedience and I'll remember you in reward. So if you remember me with obedience, I'll remember you by rewarding you for it. And it said, remember me with dua, with prayer and tasbih and glorification uh, and things like that. And the Mufassirun have gone into great detail, especially the Mutasawwifah, the people of Tasawwuf, in interpreting this particular verse with many different uh, expressions and saying that it has specific meanings. And there's no reason to specify the meaning. It, it's, it's a general statement and it should be kept in its most general statement. But if you want my summation, this verse is a clarification, it is a uh, enunciation of the high honor that remembrance has. And it's clearly articulated by the words of the Prophet ﷺ when he related from his Lord in a hadith Qudsi, a sacred hadith, which is where the Prophet speaks as if God is speaking, but it's not Qur'an. He says, I am in the opinion of my servant with me, whatever my servant thinks about me. And I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me in his, in, in his self, then I remember him in myself. Allah has a nafs. So if he remembers me in his essence, I remember him in my essence. And if he remembers me in a gathering, I remember him in a gathering greater than his gathering. In other words, the malal ala with the angels and all. So he says, dhikr is of three types. Remembrance of the heart, remembrance of the tongue, and a remembrance that contains both remembrance of heart and tongue. So it's the two. Yeah, that goes under the same type thing. Generally, the majority of scholars say you can. There are some scholars that say it's a bid'ah. But yeah, the majority say you can. Yeah, but there, there's a valid opinion about dhikr, group dhikr, where people actually uh, say dhikr together. Some say it's makru, some say it's prohibited, but those are very weak opinions. They really are. But when they're there, so they shouldn't be just rejected. Oh, that's rubbish. No, those are uh, valid opinions of val valid scholars. But the, the majority of scholars say it is permissible to gather to do dhikr. Um, Atta ibn Rabah said he was asked about the hilq al dhikr the gatherings of dhikr and he said uh, there are the circles of halal and haram in other words learning fiqh that's the real circles of dhikr but that, and that's true that, that's, if you haven't learned that you shouldn't be doing dhikr because that's a fard ain to learn that so you should learn it's important to learn 
But there are many hadiths about people gathering, reciting the Quran together, gathering, saying La ilaha illallah together. There are many, there are many sound hadiths. I mean, they, they, yeah, they just shouldn't be in the same circle. You know, if, 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 if there's, you know, if, the, if they're not distracted by one another. And I mean, this, you know, we're, we're together, we're mingling and things like that. You know, these things are just out of adab for um, the way I was taught. You know, um, people here, we're living in the West, we're in very different circumstances um, than cultures that are isolated. And not all Muslim cultures are isolated. I mean, some cultures have a segregation between the sexes, others don't. In most historical Muslim countries, there was a lot of adab about this, and, uh, you know, a lot of reasons for that. In the West, we tend to uh, intermix a lot, and people should still have adab and things like that. You know, I mean, most of you have studied in university, You've studied sitting next to men and women, you know, I mean, we've all done that, and it didn't destroy us, we didn't turn into you know, crazy people or something like that. But it's it's just adab. People, the Prophet ﷺ was on Hajj and uh, one of his relatives, a woman came up, she was very beautiful and the, in the Hajj you don't, and, 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 and uh, Abbas's cousin was like just staring at her. This is on Hajj and he's in front of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, he just, she was very beautiful and that's what the Hadith says. She had a beautiful faith. So the Prophet took his head and turned it the other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, he says that the Prophet is related from his Lord. Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am in the opinion of that my servant has of me, and I am with him when he remembers me. This is called ma'iyat al-dikr.